Hi, today I want to talk about an important concept in the tech field, which is the information and the version of you that you put out there into the world, what version of you you should be putting out there of you into the world, and what your goals should be uh, as you progress in your career. So this was something that I was, I, I know I practice every day, but I wasn't really focusing on or thinking about until a dinner that I had a couple of days ago. So this woman I just recently met asked me out on a date, and I, you know, I had a, I had a lovely evening, and uh, we, we go to dinner, and it comes up that, uh, that she, she had Googled me. And I, she asked if I had Googled her. No, she's a little disappointed. And then uh, I know where this is leading, because nobody's going to ask me if I've Googled them uh, for any other reason other than to segue less awkwardly into how they've Googled me. And this, if you Google me, man, if I, I'm like, I just looked at her like, oh, you did, and you showed up anyway. <laughs> you know, because like, well, what do you expect? They find this channel, I'm, I'm, I'm done for. Anyway, so... They, she finds it and she's talking about it and we were talking and somehow the conversation segued into what my goals were for this and I said my goal is to make it easier for everybody who started where I did to be able to get where I did just without all the roadblocks and the hassle and the misery and the headache in between. I started out knowing nothing, I didn't have a great education, I didn't have a lot of money and I managed to become financially independent to, and good at what I do through just pretty much using my brain. And there, there was a lot of, that, that was not as easy as it sounds. There was a lot of misery and heartache and nightmare along the way and a lot of discouragement from a lot of different people that probably should have been encouraging me. And it wasn't, it wasn't fun. A lot of it wasn't fun. But if I had the proper guidance, it would have been a lot easier. I, um, I very much so believe that you should put your money where your mouth is. So if I believe that the world should have been easier, then what I need to do is be a part of making that world easier. And this YouTube channel is how I make it uh, my responsibility or how I make it my problem to make the world a little bit easier for people who started where I did. So whether I'm telling you how to deal with some of the difficult situations that I was in or I'm showing you how to learn when I myself at the time did not really know how to learn, I'm trying to give you these little tidbits that are going to save you a minute, an hour, a day, a year, five years off of learning the things that I had to learn. That's my goal. And I'd also like to be able to use it as a resume. This is what I know. This is what I can do. This is what I'm capable of. These right now, this is 7,300 people that may have known nothing about basic electronics that can now do advanced laptop motherboard repair because of my basic descriptions. And she just gives me this, this like uh, slanted eye look. You know, you know the kind of look that you get when you're dating somebody that's kind of older than you and they're looking at you like, oh, isn't that cute? Like, and that, that whole, you know, just so you know, you know that you, you're never going to, nobody's ever going to hire you um, for the, to repair something for them. Like, nobody's ever going to hire you based on any of this. That's not going to happen. And she wasn't, it wasn't like in a joking or laughing manner about the content. This was, this was like dead fucking serious criticism. You know, like, there's a difference between a joke and like really looking down on somebody while you're talking to them. And this is where I know that this, you know, while my evening may go well, um, my uh, time with you is not going to be long. Because you don't understand any of what I'm trying to accomplish here, uh, nor do you understand how any of this works. Uh, firstly, uh, first and foremost, do I look like somebody who needs employment? Do I look like somebody who needs to impress potential employers? Does it seem like, seriously, in, in all honesty, with the knowledge base and the experience that I have, do you think after I'm done with work that I'm going on Malister.com and I'm going to good temps in my suit trying to get a $10 job doing data entry or like setting up Active Directory? No, I'm not. I am fine. Don't you worry about my employment. I'm good. Uh, but outside of that, the second thing that I want to talk about is the, the manner in which, which I do things. So, admittedly, I try to get certain points off here, and sometimes I'm a little obnoxious about the th the certain things. And the reason I'm obnoxious about them is because there are so many people that say the wrong thing over and over and over and over again that the only way to take that, that wrong thing that's, that's mimicked by millions of people and repeated and is to just beat it out of their head as, as nicely as possible. And believe it or not, the way I try to beat a lot of these concepts out of people's heads, this is as nice as I'm able to do it. And in terms of, uh, you know, the content that I put out there and the stuff that I put out there, I don't really care. Um, I don't care what, what your opinion is of me. I care what people's opinions are of my results. I want, if, if you learn something, but you hate me because of how I explained it, I'm not going to be focused on the fact that you don't like the way I explained it, that you hate what I've done. What, I'm, what my priority is is that what I explained was correct, it was right, 
and that you learn something from it and then you were able to do something with it. When it comes to clients that I'm dealing with, I, you could hate me, but if you love the system I set up and I fix something that somebody else could not have fixed, if I repaired something that somebody else totally botched and fucked up, if I put in cameras for half the prices of this other company that had wiring that was falling out of the walls and cameras that were flickering, I don't care if you hate me. What I care about is that you like the product uh, that I gave you. And also, what I care about in doing this, this video series, it's not about potential employers. When I say resume, I mean I'm showcasing that I have the ability to use my brain. How better to showcase that you know how to use your brain than by actually using it on camera and putting it there, uploading it for everybody to see. And this is, this is a side benefit of this channel. So admittedly, while it is also to be helpful, it also does show that I know what I'm doing. It shows from the beginning to the end without edit that I have the ability to use my brain. What is a better way of showing that you know how to use your brain? Copying and pasting a list of what you've accomplished with little exaggerations or you know, each step of the way that I can't really verify? Or showing from beginning to end that you have the capability to learn something and start something from nothing and then not only do that but also demonstrate that concept to over 7,000 people in a manner in which they can digest it even if they're not really familiar with what they're doing. See, the latter is what I'm trying to do. I don't really give a fuck about the former. And, uh, and also, in terms of how you come off, this is a lesson that I got when I was really young in the tech field, but it stuck with me to the day. And it really is a, it's something I put into practice every single day, but it's not something I've really put into words or talked about here on this channel. And it, I thought about that as soon as I got that cockeyed, condescending look. And it's, it's, it's something that really does need to be talked about. And it's from one of my best tech mentors. I didn't uh, spend a lot of time with this particular person, but what he taught me during that short period of time has stuck with me and will stick with me throughout my entire life. His name was Ricky Began. He worked at Avatar Studios in the 80s. He learned and he worked there in the 90s and then he went on to do amazing things at other studios. He went on to make amazing money at other freelance facilities. But he would still come back to work at Avatar every now and then. And he would, he would tell me, you know, I can make more money doing work anywhere else but here. But I will, I will come back and I will help anytime I need because this is the place that got me started. This is the place where I learned and, you know, and I earned my keep and was able to create a career for myself. And I can respect that. But one of the things that he did that nobody else did there, he always said what everybody else was thinking, but what everybody else was afraid to say. It doesn't matter how much trouble you think you're going to get into. He would always say what everybody else knew to be true, but for some reason everybody else wasn't saying it. Whether it was because of politics or because they were afraid they were going to get in trouble or lose their job or people were going to think poorly of him because of what he said, he never gave a crap. He said what was on his mind. Not only did he say what, he, not only did he say what was on his mind, he said what was on everybody else's mind. And he had this way of uniting everybody by saying the things that nobody else would say, but the things that we all knew were true. A great example of this. I, I really, I don't mean to insult people with this, and I'm sorry if it comes off as insulting. But they had this one idea one day. Somebody was complaining about noise in the Studio C. I'm not insulting Studio C. That's an amazing. The, you go into that room, it sounds fucking amazing. Like the, the studios at Avatar, or what the rest of the world, or anybody building a studio, should be basing their rooms on. And it is an amazing place with amazing technology and amazingly knowledgeable people, and that's what matters, and that's what counts. But... Somebody one day was bitching or complaining about hearing the, the noise from the computers or whatever from the machine room right behind it. So somebody decides that they're going to get a shower curtain and hang the shower curtain and the shower curtain is going to absorb the sound. Again, like, there, there are arguments in the studio world about soundproofing versus acoustic treatment. Most people don't know the difference. There are so many people out there that just <clears throat> think one does the other. That's why you see all these dumbasses hanging Oralex foam on the wall and thinking that that's going to keep the person behind them from hearing anything. This is even worse because a shower curtain, it's not even, that's not even acoustic treatment. That's just like, what are you doing with this thing? Nobody mentioned that this is a dumb idea because the person who put it up could get them in trouble. Nobody mentions it. Nobody opens their mouth. And I, again, I don't quote me here because this is a, uh, this is eight years ago. This is the, so, you know, I don't have the perfect memory for everything that went on. He, he said something like, you know, did you guys manage to find a way to waterproof all the amps and the, and the, and the G4 tower in Studio C's machine room? Because I'm pretty sure I'm going to fuck it up if I take a shower in there. And, you know, he, he always had a way of not only bringing out what everybody else was thinking, but he had a way of doing it in a humorous fashion so that you weren't really insulted by what it was that he was saying. And he had a good way about him of doing that. And that's something that he earned through being good at his job. See, that's not something that I can say at the time. Because at the time, I, was, I sucked so bad at what I did, I couldn't even replace switches without fucking them up half the time. This is basic, basic soldering. I wasn't, 
amazing at what I did when I was first starting out. But when you're good at what you do, what it earns you is the freedom to say that without getting in trouble. It earns you the freedom to say that without getting fired. It earns you the freedom to say and do what you please. And I forget how the conversation came up exactly because I know I wouldn't have been openly critical of his dress since, again, I'm the intern, he's the master. He, you know, he came into work one day with this like, gray T-shirt, sweat stains on it, jeans that are all you know, kind of dirty with holes in them. And I, I, had, I found some roundabout way of asking him without insulting him, like, how do you come to work like that? And when you're getting good money for it. And he explained to me, he's like, kid, we fix the problems that nobody else wants to fix. I fix the crap that nobody else knows how to do. That's what I care about. That, this, you're allowed to do this. You earn this when you're good at what you do. You earn this when you know how to do shit that everybody else doesn't know how to do. When I go to a studio that has a bunch of toothpicks in their knee VRP because nobody in that studio can replace the switch without fucking it up even if you give them six hours, and I say in 40 minutes, I'm going to I'm gonna get the toothpicks out of your entire console, I can wear what I want. I can say what I want, and I can do what I want. And he, wa and he was a nice guy. Don't get me wrong. He took the time to show me things and explain to me things because I was humble, things that you're not going to learn in a lot of other places. And I appreciate the hell out of that. He was a good, kind-hearted man. But at the same time, when something was completely ridiculous, you didn't see this guy you know, shutting up about it or not laughing about it to people's faces. And that's something that we need to see more of in the tech field. Well, if we see more of that in the tech field, then maybe people will stop doing silly things. They'll stop bringing us stupid questions. They'll stop asking me to set up analog $400 DVRs and wonder why you can't zoom in on it and look like CSI. There needs to be more people out there instead of going, we can try that or I can show it. There needs to be more people that know what they're talking about, that are confident in their skill set, that are confident in what they do, that are happy to temporarily be arrogant and go, ha, 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 when somebody presents them with a bullshit idea. Just recently, somebody's like, so I want a terabyte DV, I want a terabyte drive put into my DVR. Uh, you know, I'm like, well, what is your expectation? I want to know what the expectation is here because I don't want to set up something for you that you're going to hate me for. I don't care if I'm following what you're asking me to do. I, my goal, end goal is your happiness. That's something that Ricky Began understands, the end happiness of the person who's setting up a system. And he's like, well, I want, to, I want it to be able to record up to 12 months of video. And I asked, how many cameras do you have? And he says, 16. And that allowed me again at that point to go, <laughs> because again, that's not going to work. And, and again, if, I, if you laugh about it now, it's easy. If you, if you laugh about it after you set up the system and do it for him and he's all disappointed, it doesn't matter that he's the one who asked for that drive in that system. He's, he's going to hate you and bad reviews and sue you and chargebacks and all sorts of other nasty crap. And, you know, this is something that we actually need more of. I'm not saying we need more arrogant, pompish jerks. Because, I, again, I know some people who like to think that they know everything when they don't know everything. And it's annoying, it's aggravating, it's irritating. And above all, it discourages you from wanting to do anything around them. It discourages sharing of information because you're just afraid of being shot down all the time. Rather, what I'm saying is not that you should go out of your way to be arrogant. It's not that you should go out of your way to be an asshole or a jerk. I don't like those type A personalities and I don't get along with them. And surprisingly, when you, when you meet me or you talk to me in person, believe it, you know, I'm, I'm, not the, I'm not always the animated douchebag that I am here when I'm trying to get a point across. But what you sh we should seek to avoid is going above and beyond to make it seem like we're really that concerned with what somebody thinks of us just because you know, we, we don't want to lose our job, just because I may not want that potential employer five or ten years from now to see that I said, in a YouTube video and oh no, my employment, I don't care. And that's a luxury that I want all of you to have. I want all of you off of the information on this channel to be so good at what it is you do that you can become independent as a result of it. Not just financially independent, independent from having to suck up to people, independent from having to censor your opinion, independent in terms of you can be who you are and you don't have to worry about it. I'm not saying you should go above and beyond. Again, I'm not saying you should go above and beyond and be mean and, not, and, and be a douchebag. I'm not, because again, there are a lot of people who do that. What I'm saying is that you should not be afraid to be who you are if you're good at what you do. You shouldn't be wearing the nicest suit on your job interview because, to, to hide the fact that you don't know shit. You should go to the job interview dressed how you are comfortable but knowing that you are the best fit for the job, knowing that you know as much as there is to know. You know, again, in speaking with this idea of nobody hiring you to do this, I, I've never gotten a job really from a job interview. I can't remember the last one I got besides working at Model Sporting Goods when I was 17. 
I'm not a fan of job interviews in general. I'm not a fan of them because they put you in a needy position. I feel awkward as an employer having, holding job interviews, and none of the people that I have working with me right now are people that came from job interviews, the people that I previously knew or met or who worked in the industry who weren't happy with where they were, and I knew that they were already capable. Job interviews come from this point of neediness. Standard resumes, again, they come from this point of neediness where I'm unemployed. I don't have money. I need to impress this person. I need them to think I can do the job. I need them to think well of me. It starts from a point of neediness. And nothing that starts from a point of neediness is ever really good, which is why I'm, I'm, just not, a, I'm not looking for people to hire me anyway. I'm, I don't want job interviews. I'm not out there sending out my fucking resume in a traditional fashion the way this person is criticizing me would, would think I'm, I'm doing. I don't, again, do I, do I look like a needy person? Do I look like I need or care what somebody else is going to think of, of, of the content that I put on the internet? Fuck no. Uh, what, what I say resume, what I mean again is I have, I'm showing that I have a brain. One of the best ways to showcase that you know how to do something is to actually do what it is you say you know how to do and then record it and show here. Look, I can actually do this. Again, what, what puts more trust in you? A bullet point on a website that says expert in this field with a little picture? A resume that says two years experience doing this that you probably are not going to be able to verify because the reference is the, the guy's mom? Or a one-hour video that showcases here's me starting. Here's me not knowing how to do any of this. Here's how I learned it on my own with no resources. Here's how I implemented it with these tools because I had no money for the right one. And here's the finished working end product. And that's the thing that I want to get across here. You know, it's, it's not about a resume in terms of I'm going to hand this to somebody with a job application and say, please hire me based on my 109 YouTube videos. No. What I want to do is showcase, in addition to help, I want to also be able to showcase that Here's my thought process. Here's how I think. Not only here's how I think, here's that I have the capability to think at all. Now you know I have the capability to think because I've shown you. Here are my opinions on these subjects. Here's why I have these opinions. It's not just that I have this opinion, but here's the experience that I have and also what I've run into that's caused me to come to this conclusion and caused me to have this opinion. It shows that you're able to solve problems. It shows that I have the ability to use my brain. And what you find in these cases is that it's not about me giving the resume out to other people. It's about the other people that start coming to me to solve their problems. It's about the people that start coming to me with offers. I've been offered money countless times by countless people. I, I have emails of people saying, I will spend a week learning with you for $5,000. Like, again, I, I assure you, if I need money, I ain't going out there to good temps and getting a job. I'm going to start replying to some of these emails and say, hey, remember that money you said you wanted to learn this stuff along with me? You know, again, that's what I'm interested in. When a large company finds me through this, and again, when it's, it's stated that you know, the method in which I get across my ideas is not always the most traditional definition of professional. Here's the other thing that this woman doesn't realize. The other thing this person doesn't realize is when you're in a, when you're in a room with 20 people who work at a company, when you're talking to one job interviewer, you have to worry about the likelihood of offending that one person. When you're putting content up on the internet, what you have to worry about is how many people are going to like this for in an audience of about what, billions upon billions of people? And now, again, this channel gets about seven to 10,000 views a day. So I don't need a lot of those people to like me. I can, if, literally, if 0.001% of my daily viewership were to give me money, I would be set for the rest of my life. And I don't even seek business off of this channel. I just put all that stuff up there because, let's face it, if I'm going to put all this information out there, I might as well plug my own website. This isn't something I'm doing to try to get rich off of it. But, you know... Oh, I've been making this chair looser instead of tighter this whole time. No wonder I've been so uncomfortable. This is a really nice chair. I love the Aeron chair, but I was turning the damn thing the wrong way. There we go. Back support. Love back support. Can't sit in a crappy chair if I'm going to sit. Oh, that is, that is gorgeous. Okay, back to what I was talking about before my back was killing me from this damn chair. Ooh, that is springy. The goal should be to build a brand around people who think like you. The more honest I am with my emotions, with how I think, with my methodology, with my troubleshooting, with how I go about anything, the more likely I am to meet people who think the same way, who admire that method of thinking and, and, and how to find them. Again, if I'm trying to 
get a job in a job interview environment, my audience is an audience of one. So if you are not really a fan of some of the eccentric things that I say or the strange manner in which I go about my daily life and the strange way that I think, well, I'm kind of screwed. But when I have an audience of seven or 10,000 people a day, I don't care that six or seven or, or a thousand of them like me. I don't need that amount. I really only need about this much to get that across. And I would rather have this many people liking the real me, the thoughts that I put out there that are actually mine, the opinions that I put there that are actually mine, that have this many people like me for the censored version of me. The thoughts where I kind of hid the, 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 the part that was really important, where I hid what I really felt. You know, again, you, 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 your goal when you become good at what you do, should be to get as, to be yourself. Your goal should be to be yourself. The goal should be to dress the way that again, you want to dress, like not a suit and tie, not a, you know, a silly uniform or something with a name tag. It should be if you want to dress the way you want to dress to do what you want to do, that should be it. If you want to go into the studio the way Ricky Began was dressed, that's fine. I'm about to go to the gym after this. I ain't going to switch into my gym clothes because I don't feel like carrying them. I want to dress like this. This is another thing that I hated in school is where they would tell you what you're allowed to wear and that you, say, hey, you had to wear gym clothes or you were going to get in trouble or get a zero. I'm an adult. I run miles every day. I lift at the gym and do my calisthenics. This is what I wear. Um, and, you know, another person who was a great tech mentor of mine who had very similar mentality was Slipperman. Uh, this is somebody I never actually met in person, and I hope to someday. He, his name is Tim. He's a recording engineer who had an amazing studio. And if you go to the wombforums.com, you'll notice that he had a radio show for a long time where he talked about a lot of different things. And very much like my videos, it's not just, here's how to record. He would put every single bit of information he learned about people, about circumstances, about life, into the smallest things he was talking about. He was so much talking about automating a fader, he was putting all of his life's experiences into that, and that's a lot of what you got out of his information. And uh, he too, to say the least, was not a fan of the definition of traditional professionalism. He too has a very, very distinct way of getting across his thoughts, of banging them into your head, of not being a fan of bullshit, and of saying what everybody else knows is true but is not saying because it's, you know, it's not the right thing to say, it's not the politically correct thing to say, it's not the thing that's safest to say. He doesn't care. He says what he believes to be true based on his own experiences. He does not give two shits of a fuck what you think of it. And he has the discography to back it up. His albums sound fucking amazing. I listen to metal albums every single day, which is over-compressed, tinny, garbage-sounding trash, and you listen to his music on a good stereo, and it's like, wow. This is not the kind of music where they say, oh yeah, if you listen to metal on these speakers, since these speakers are accurate, it'll sound bad. His music is the time of, his, the music that he's produced is the type of music where you listen to it, it sounds big, it sounds real, it sounds good, it sounds amazing. His discography speaks for itself. So when he says these outlandish things, when he says these things, he gets to get away with it, not just because people are like, oh, he's just being silly. No, he is good at what he does. Therefore, he is allowed to speak his mind. Therefore, he does not care what you think of it. Slipperman is a person who I don't think for a day in his fucking life was worried that a post that he made on the internet, that a video or a radio show that he did, would come off wrong to somebody that would not hire him as a result. Again, just like this person's telling me, you know, you're not, you're never going to get hired off of this content. Like, again, I don't think he's ever cared about like, oh, look at what you said in this radio show. Nobody's going to hire you because he said this. And the other thing that he cares about, again, it's not what you think of him. It's what you think of his finished product. There's this one thing where he's talking about uh, getting a, how to get a certain specific guitar sound and one of some of the things you got to do and how doing these things is a pain in the ass and sometimes the artists are not really a fan of sitting through it. And he points out that same person that's hating you right now for making them do this shit over and over, he says, fuck you. Tell them keep doing it because that's the same person that's going to hate you when the product, when the finished product does not come out the exact way they want or better. He does not care what that person thinks of him. And that's the definition of a true professional. They don't care what you think of their clothing. They don't care what you think of how they come off when they're, when, when they're making their presentation or creating their argument. What they care about is what you think and how happy you are with their finished product. That's what matters. That's what I care about. What do you think of the finished product? You can hate me. You can hate the ideas I put out there. But did I not explain the concept in a manner where you with no experience could learn? Fuck. Anyway, did I explain the process in a manner where you with no experience could learn and get started tomorrow? 
did I not help make your life a little easier through how I explained this concept, even if you're not really a fan of the way I explained how a DC to DC boost circuit works? Do I really care if you don't like that I threw a motherboard across the room for a dramatic effect after showing you why you don't put dish soap and Windex in your ultrasonic cleaner? No, I care that I got my point across. What I care about is that you stop doing that shit and ruining your boards. What I care about is that you make more money. Do I care that you hate me? No. What I care about are results. If you're a business, do I care that you hate the way I explained how to use this ultrasonic cleaner when I'm throwing the board across the room? No. What I care about is that you stop using and stop sodomizing motherboards that you could have charged $300 to fix. If you're an end consumer and I'm showing you how to remove screws in a certain area and I'm not really the nicest when I'm explaining the exact way to do it, do I care that you hate me? No, I care that you come out of it worth a working laptop. Even if you don't give me any money, even if my bank account is not $1 higher as a result of it. What I care about is the what happens as a result of my product or service. What, what did I put out there into the world? If I put out there into the world information that is correct, I don't give a shit what you think of it. And, you know, this is another thing that came up on a forum that I was posting on recently. Somebody said, you know, if you phrase this a little differently... Uh, you, you, know, you, you might be uh, taken as more professional than you are right now, even though the, the, you know, your content is good. But if you phrase it differently, people would take you more professionally. And I think it's something you should be concerned about. My concern, again, when it comes to again, that, that whole idea of being perceived as professional from the standard definition of professional, don't care. Uh, my concern is that I'm right. My concern is that I'm able to solve your problem as a result of being right. My concern is not what you think of me. It never has been. It never will. And I, and I guarantee uh, next time I meet a woman who's asking me out on a date, my name is George Friedman. My name is Philip Hendrickson. My name, no, no, you're not getting a chance to Google me. Learn that lesson. Get the fuck out of here.